All right, The Initiates of the Flame by Manly P. Hall. Few realise that even at the present stage of civilization in this world, there are souls who, like the priests of the ancient temples, walk the earth and watch and guard the sacred fires that burn upon the altar of humanity. Purified ones they are, who have renounced the life of this sphere in order to guard and protect the flame, that spiritual principle in man, now hidden beneath the ruins of his fallen temple. But everywhere, even in the rise and fall of nations, we see through the haze of materiality, justice everywhere we see rewards, not of man, but of the invisible one, the eternal flame. Okay, so paying homage to Lucifer Satan. In the introduction, a great hand reaches out from the unseen and regulates the affairs of man. Well, I wonder who that hand belongs to. It reaches out from the spiritual flame, which nourishes all creative things. The never dying fire that burns on the sacred altar of the cosmos. That great fire which is the spirit of God. Mm. See, you need to understand, when Masons are talking about God, they're not talking about the Most High, Yahweh. They're talking about Lucifer, Satan. So all of this great flame, spirit of God, they're talking about Lucifer's essence. If we turn again to the races now dead, we shall, if we look, find the cause of their destruction. The light had gone out. When the flame within the body is withdrawn, the body is dead. When the light was taken from the altar, the temple was no longer the dwelling place of a living God. Degeneracy, lust and passion, hates and fears, crept into the souls of Greece and Rome, and black magic overshadowed Egypt. The light upon the altar grew weaker and weaker. The priest lost the word, the name of the flame. Little by little, the flame flickered out, and as the last spark grew cold, a mighty nation died, buried beneath the dead ashes of its own spiritual flame. But the flame did not die, like spirit of which it is the essence, it cannot die, because it is life. And life cannot cease to be. In some wilderness of land or sea it rested once again. And there rose a mighty nation round that flame, so history goes on through the ages. As long as people are true to the flame, it remains, but when they cease to nourish it with their lives, it goes on to other lands and other worlds. Those who worship this flame are now called heathens. Well, I wonder why. It's all pagan worship. Like the Bible has a totally different interpretation of these world events. So our shaman in Ipet Goat 2 represents the keeper of the flame of Hermes. That fire burning upon the altar since ancient Egypt. He represents all the pagans that have nourished it since that time. Little do we realise that we are heathens ourselves until we are baptised of the Holy Spirit, which is fire, for fire is light, and the children of the flame are the sons of light, even as God is light. See, it sounds Christian, but it's, it's not. It's a Gnostic mystery school teaching, and that you are God basically in the flesh. There are those who have for ages laboured with man to help him to kindle within himself this spark, which is his divine birthright. It is these who by their lives of self-sacrifice -sacri and service have awakened and tended this fire, and who through ages of study have learned the mystery it contained, that we now call the initiates of the flame. For ages they have laboured with mankind to help him to uncover the light within himself, and on the pages of history they have left their seal, the seal of fire. Unhonoured and unsung, they have laboured with humanity and now their lives are used as fairy stories to amuse children. But the time will come yet, when the world shall know the work they did, and realise that our present civilization is raised upon the shoulders of the mighty demigods of the past. So, ha, he's talking about the pre-flood world Nephilim kingdom. There is but one religion in all the world, and that is the worship of God, the spiritual flame of the universe. Well, see, this is where the Noahide laws come into it. We are the flame-born sons of God, thrown out as sparks from the wheels of the infinite. Around this flame we have built forms which have hidden our light, but as students we are increasing this light by love and service, until it shall again proclaim us sons of the eternal. Therefore, let each student watch the fire that burns upon his altar. Let him also make that altar, his body, as beautiful and harmonious as possible. Okay, so those are key words for the hermetic marriage. And let him also sacrifice upon that altar the frankincense and myrrh, his actions and his deeds. As in the tabernacle, he offers it all upon the altar of divinity. So let him day by day dispel the symbols of mortality. 
the coffin and the open grave by which he prepared himself through the mastery of the lower emotions within himself, and recognise that no matter how crystallised or dead his life may be, the fact that he exists at all proves that the sprig of acacia, the promise of life and immortality, is somewhere within himself. And then on the next couple of pages we have symbols and their meanings, so the lotus. May your consciousness be lifted upward through the tree of life within yourself, until in the brain it blossoms forth as the lotus, that rising from the darkness of the lower world lifts its flower to catch the rays of the sun. So that means, become beautiful and harmonious, because this is the Kabbalistic tree of life, and in the middle you see beauty, and beauty is a key word for androgynous. So make the hermetic marriage, become godlike, that's what they teach. The Philosopher's Stone. This is the true stone of the philosopher, which gives him power over all created things. This stone is himself. The experiences of his evolution have cut and polished the rough stone until in the initiate it reflects the light of creation. Transhumanist agenda on another level. Not the merging of man and machine, but of man and God. This is about the ascension to Godhood, the original lie that the serpent told Eve in the garden. So just to recap, the Keeper of the Flame represents all the pagans, i.e. Masons, Jesuits, Rosicrucians, who have worked since the days of antiquity to keep the flame, that secret doctrine of the mysteries, burning all these years. The secret doctrine is the Philosopher's Stone, the end goal of the magnum opus, which is the great work. The frog, being a water and land dwelling creature, represents transition between worlds. The bear represents courage and strength of the ones who bore the weight of carrying the mysteries. And the raven is also a representation of transformation. In Northwest Native American mythology, raven ascends between our realm and the heavenly. Raven transforms the world and brought the people fire, (coughs) light. Although we weren't able to shatter that highest, hardest glass ceiling this time, thanks to you, it's got about 18 million cracks in it. And it may be hard to see tonight, but we are all standing under a glass ceiling right now. And the light is shining through like never before filling us all with the hope and the sure knowledge that the path will be a little easier next time. So after he finishes his dance, the ceiling crumbles and the light shines through. This means once the magnum opus is complete, i.e. you complete the hermetic marriage, unifying all opposites within yourself, becoming the philosopher's stone, the light, godhood, can now enter. (laughs) The mystery of the alchemist. This is the real mystery of alchemy, not making physical gold, but symbolic gold. The alchemist is focused upon one thing, and that is finding the philosopher's stone. With all the chemicals at his command, the various combinations thoroughly understood, he is labouring with his furnace and burners to make of the base metals the philosopher's gold and the immortal stone. Salt, sulphur and mercury are the answer to his problem. From them, he makes the Philosopher's Stone. As the close of the 15th century clouded him with mystery, so the dawn of the 20th century is crowning him with the glory of his just reward. Now the Philosopher, building his sacred stone, is doing so by harmonising his spirit and his body. The result is the Philosopher's Stone. The five-pointed star is also called the Star of Bethlehem, which heralds the coming of Christ within. Christ within is Gnostic. So this symbol means complete, the union within yourself, and five represents ascension. It's the same as the lotus, where the lotus rises out of the base of Mercury and heads to the north, where God resides. The living... (laughs) The living philosopher's stone is a very beautiful thing. (laughs) The transmuting process radiates from the body as a soul of blue and gold and is very beautiful once again. Blue equals salt equals female. Gold equals sulphur equals male. Blue and gold, soul of blue and gold is a harmonised, in union, equilibrium, 
you know where I'm, you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> the marriage of the sun and the moon. And from that union is produced the Philosopher's Stone. I hope that all makes sense. This is the serpent crown of the ancient gods. It shows that the two paths or parts of the spirit fire have been united. This crown is a symbol of mastery and the union takes place within the student when the life forces are lifted to the brain. And so you see their little apron that they wear as well. It represents exactly the same thing. Purify matter. Spirit descending into purified matter. But what of the priest kings who laboured there in the days of its glory? They are still with us. For those who were leaders before are leaders now. We are working towards this. And the time will come when each person for himself will know the mystery of the ark. When the student through purification shall be led through the door of the holy, ho the holy of holies. And there be enveloped by the light of truth. And then it says to choose your path. White or black. Doesn't matter. It's all Satan. The first beast or the second beast. They're both going into the lake of fire. But yeah, this Masonic teaching is just crazy, man. Like, why would you want to do that? Make yourself an androgynous being to try and become God. It goes, it's the same thing with evolution when I argued in my evolution video. How did an asexual being divide itself into dual sexes? Why would God create Adam and Eve androgynous and then the fool would be the divide? That's what they believe. It's just, it's crazy. But yeah, seek Christ because these people are running the show and it is crazy out here now. Not joking. Seek Christ.